Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I've got a panel ready to go, so let's see if I can do this by myself. Might be a little awkward. May need an extra hand. Okay, so there's one down. And uh, much like Edison making the light bulb, I think, I forget how many times, but basically he said every failure was just another way to, learned another way not to make a light bulb. Um, I just learned many ways not to attach this panel. Uh, but I think by doing it the wrong way, that's really tight quarters under there, it's hard to get your fingers in there and get things lined up and everything. I think what I learned is in the future for the following panels, I will take this little setup here with the cone nut and the bolt and I will pre-thread it through the back side of the frame of the panel. So I'll put all four of those in place and then I'll bring them over here and basically you just need to sit those cone nuts down in the channel and then twist them once they're in. So I think I'll pre-thread them onto the frame of the solar panel. So after what I just went through, I think I've learned that that's gonna be the way to go. So I will try that for the subsequent ones. So we'll check back here in a minute. Okay, let's see if I can do the second one a little smarter. a little tight, but better. Okay, that's one set of three. Hopefully I learned enough to do the next two sets of three a little faster. All the measurements look good. I'll just finish nailing those rafter ties in. Okay, and now more Unistrut. Careful what you pick out of the bins at the hardware store. That one was not what it was supposed to be. That washer is supposed to be caught on that screw and it just went right through it. That is not the same size hole as the rest of them. Well, it's about dinner time. That ought to do it for tonight. So I'm ready. Put three more panels on there tomorrow morning. And then the third set of rafters and three more panels. Well, that should do it for now. That's my nine, they're not hooked up. All right, so here we are, uh, same situation. We got nine panels here, but I wanted to show something. I'm not sure if you can pick it up here in this video or not, but Pam and I both noticed, and at first I thought it was an illusion. If you look at these panels across, they look like they're kind of dipping in the middle. So I'm not sure if you can see it here, but they are. And I thought at first, I thought it was an optical illusion. 
And I told Pam not to worry about it. I said, that's just your eyes playing tricks on you with the lines on the panels. But when you get a good look at this, you can actually see them kind of bow down in the center, which means to me, and the test was, I looked under here at the beam that goes across and it is clearly sagging in the middle. So this is a problem that I always worry about when I do anything with wood, when I build anything. This is one of the reasons that building freaks me out so much. So let me get another look at it. Here, bring it down. There we go. I think you can see that that's kind of sagging in the middle. I've actually put a string across there to see how bad it was. I tried a string at the, the height on both sides where the, where the beam starts, you know, on, the, on those posts. So as you can see how the sag is in the middle. So if I come in here, it should actually help the wind for the noise too. But there's that string. You can see kind of just how much we are sagged below that string. That string obviously is, is level from there to there. That's, that string is at the height that the beam should be at. So it is in fact sagging. So this is one of the issues that I always worry about. And it has to do with, you know, when you, when you span a gap, in this case, this is, uh, it's just under 12 feet, I believe. Um, so the beam is 16 feet across, but it's got two feet of overhang on each side. So um, when you account for the posts where they connect and everything, it's, it's just under 12 feet. So I'm always, I'm never sure how big of a beam it takes, you know, two by what? Two by six, eight, ten to support a certain weight across a certain gap. So I know that they make something or that, you know, there's something out there, they're uh, span tables that I believe that engineers use when they design buildings and stuff. And I'm aware of them and I've just never really been able to understand them. So maybe I'm just a moron, but obviously I'm gonna have to take another look and try and understand them better. So, uh, but the, the issue is, so going forward, I'm gonna have to understand that a little better because obviously you just can't guess Oh, I think a two by six will handle this. I thought a two by six would handle this, but it clearly is not. Uh, so the solution I believe is going to be to put a third post from there, put a post there and post there. So if I put a third post in the middle, that should be fine. And the good news is I can fix that problem. It's kind of a pain in the butt. It'll take a little time, and a little money, but um, nothing major, but uh, I'll have to kind of remove that one bottom panel have to dig a, a post hole right there, put a post in, and just to test that theory and make sure I can actually straighten all that out, I've got I've got a jack here that I'm actually going to just temporarily jack that up. That's not my solution, of course, but, but it'll show that I can jack it up and I can straighten out the panels and everything, and then that just means that I need to dig a hole here, put a post in, I'll put the post in taller than it needs to be, I'll jack the beam up to where it's straight and then I'll attach the post, you know, after I've cemented the post and it's dried and everything and it's set and it's not going anywhere, then I'll attach it at the height that I want the beam to be and then it shouldn't give at all and I'll just cut the top of the post off. So to do that, I'm going to have to disassemble a couple things. I'm going to have to take that panel off and I'm going to have to dig around this beam. It's going to be kind of a hassle, but I should be able to do it. And it should just take a short four by four, you know, probably four feet, maybe slightly more than four feet, depending on how deep I put it in the ground. I put these others two feet. So um, the good news is I can fix it. The bad news is I need to be smarter in the future. Yeah, you can't just guess at these things. So if anybody out there knows a good resource on figuring out what you can span with what kind of wood and supporting what weight, um, Maybe those span tables that I've seen are the answer, but I'm, I need some help reading them, obviously, because I've never really been able to get much out of them. So, uh, because they're made for all kinds of different species of lumber and all kinds of stuff. And so, um, anyway, just noting something, this is, this is one of the things that always scares me. So it's happened and I think we can fix it though. So let's get to fixing it. So here's the proof, I think, of our suggested fix again i'm not sure what you can pick up on the camera here so i'll get a little closer but there's a jack in the middle put a block of wood on it just to separate spread that weight a little bit um, but i've pushed it up on that beam it looks pretty straight just to the eye and if i get close i should be able to see that now that string that i tied from side to side we're pretty level with it again it's hard to be exact here it's hard to show it all but also 
it should be pretty obvious when I take you out here. Again, I don't know if you saw the, the dip. I don't know if it was easy to pick up on here, but now when I look across this, I'm nice and flat. There's no, there's no sag in the middle anymore. So it clearly is the issue. It wasn't just my eyes or any tricks on me or anything. So, so what that tells me is again, I basically have to come up with a permanent solution that's doing what this jack is doing, which is a center post. So that's what I'm gonna have to do. So gotta get to work on that. All right. Just a slight change of plans today. Um, here I am under the solar mount again. You see that it's jacked up to get us, this board was sagging, to get us up level. Uh, so after talking to some friends, uh, Bill, my neighbor Bill, the upside of downsizing, and Craig, um, got some advice and some, some suggestions uh, and a couple things that came out of that, uh, I think some really good ideas. Number one, so I had talked about uh, putting an extra post in here, you know, in concrete and the, like all the other posts. Um, the problem with it, well, one, that's a pain, but two, it's not really necessary. This post wouldn't be, you know, the four corner posts are, are keeping the, the, whole, the whole thing from moving and from lifting and, and, and turning and all, all different things, right? That's why they're in the ground. This one really it doesn't have to serve that purpose. It really just is a support to provide some, some up force, right, on this, on this uh, beam so that it doesn't sag. So because of that, this post doesn't really need to go into the ground. It just needs to be a support. So you almost, in a sense, could just, the same way I put a jack here, you almost could just jam a two by four and kind of wedge it in there and, and have that be. So along those lines, my neighbor Bill suggested using a pier block, which I happen to have. Um, so I'm gonna slide a pier block under here and that pier block is meant to accept uh, a four by four or three and a half by three and a half um, post. So I'm gonna take some of my leftover post and I'm gonna slide this pier block under. I've marked the middle here. Um, and I've already got it jacked up to the right height. So I'm gonna slide this pier block under and put this four by four in place probably clamp it there and then attach it just like the other. So this will just be a temporary support or permanent support. But the other beauty of that is if over time things move or sag or, or the ground, maybe under this pier block, maybe the ground gives a little bit because this isn't, you know, in the ground and concrete or anything. So things shift a little bit or whatever. This this support is essentially adjustable, right? So so I can undo it and redo it at a different level if, if things start to give a little bit. So so I like that idea. It's It's, this is, this should always, and it's a little, you'll notice it's a little long, so, and that's on purpose, because if things start to happen, I can, I can kind of raise it up and do it again and raise it up and do it again. So I don't expect to have to do that, but if I did, it's nice that this kind of is a little bit flexible. So, and I can, I can move it, I can raise it, I can lower it, I can do things. So, because it's not a post in the ground cut off to the exact height. So, so that's what I'm gonna try and do here. So let's give that a go. A little tight quarters to work in here, but but let's give it a try. All right. That should do it. Let's take a look. Okay, so there we are with the jack removed and our support block and beam in place, or post. So again, that, if necessary, that can be adjusted in the future, which I like a lot. Um, it's not sitting perfectly level or anything, it's not beautiful, but again, it is not really providing stability to the structure, it's really just providing some up force on that beam to stop it from sagging. Really, it's telling me that I should have had, that's too long of a span, I should have had three posts there from the beginning. So, um, but, so I really just need some up force so it doesn't have to be super stable or anything. Um, so the obvious question might be, are there gonna be issues elsewhere because of what I'm spanning and, and what weight I'm supporting? So I think the answer is no. And here's why um, the rafters are also 16 foot uh, pieces. Uh, they span 
a little less actually than that front. They span because they're tilted. I take that back. They span about the same. They span about 12 feet from front to back, but they will not be holding the same amount of weight that that beam is supporting. That beam is supporting, it's distributed, but it's supporting the, the weight of all the panels, all the equipment really. The, the wood, the rafters, the unistrut, the, the panels, everything is sitting on that beam and will also be sitting on this top beam up here. And I'll talk about that in a second. But when it comes to the rafters themselves, two rafters only support the weight of eventually five panels, currently three panels, but those rafters also have a uh, unistrut attached to them, which should stiffen them as well. So I don't think we're gonna have a, the same issue with sagging in the rafters. And as far as this back beam, which should experience the same kinds of forces as this front beam, uh, maybe not quite as much because the weight is sort of angled down. I'm not sure if that's the case as far as how much weight is pushing down. I feel like there's got to be more weight pushing down on that front beam than this back beam. But anyway, um, if you think that the same amount of weight is pushing down on this back beam and you're going to have that sagging effect on the back as well, I suppose that is possible. But um, I am planning on adding, I was planning all along on adding um, angled uh, uh, bracing, support bracing from kind of down this bottom corner here up to this beam touching under the beam. It'll actually, so it'll be attached to, just like that beam is attached to the back of that post, this support angle uh, bracing will be attached to the outside of that beam. When it comes up, it can actually attach underneath. So I can essentially push up uh, on this beam. So I'm gonna do that from both sides. So because of that, I think that should negate the, the need for a similar fix in the back as I have in the front. So because I was gonna do that bracing anyway, I think that's gonna solve any problem if there would have been of sagging on that back beam. So I think we'll be all right. Uh, I may even apply some up force, kind of like I just did with the jack. I may, as I attach those those angle supports, um, those braces, I may actually apply some force up on this beam just to to push it up, kind of like I did on the front before I before I attach that. So before I attach these these braces, I'll push up on this beam a little bit um, and make sure it's either level or slightly even crowned up the tiniest bit. So. Um, but that should take care of that. So I think we're okay. Crisis averted. But, uh, but yeah, it tells me that I, I guessed that I was going to be able to span this distance and support that weight, and I was wrong. So got to get a little smarter for the future. But for now, problem solved. We'll check back with you later. <laughs>